Good evening, everyone present here. Let us start with the session. We all know that the CBC board exams are nearby and only few days are left for the exam to start. You all must be working very hard. I'm pretty sure about it. All must have set their own goals. You must be having set your own scores and you all must have working for achieving your goals and scores. Today, I, Sheetal Tiwari, in a very good support with Kushal sir. I'm here to help you in attaining your goals and achieve your dreams. So let's begin our today's journey. Before we start with the journey, let me share a presentation with you with a very good note on what we can start our journey positively with. Today's session is purely based on how to score 95% and above in our coming CBSC board examinations. By now, we all have been preparing for our course. We have gone thoroughly through our course. What extra can we do? What extra can we do to improve our score? Let's start. It is very well said. It is very well said by Shiv Kera, an author and a motivational speaker. He says, Winners don't do different things, but they do things differently, right? So what are the things that we need to do differently? Let us look at it. A successful student has the following attributes. A successful student has a growth mindset. A student is consistent and persistent in his studies. He sets goals beforehand. He looks after himself, not only physically, but mentally too. He or she partners with the teachers. He is in a very good connection with teachers. He definitely values the education, does not waste time, supercharges his vocabulary, develops very good learning strategies, and learns to write. Let us look into it one by one. A very important point is, you have to supercharge your vocabulary. What does it mean? Read, 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 and read. The more you read, it helps you to improve your vocabulary. Once you improve your vocabulary, it will help you to give a better presentation of your concept. Because it is a science paper, you definitely need to use certain scientific terms in your answer to impress your examiner. So read and charge your vocabulary. Focus on the words that are very important to be included in the answers. Set your goals. By now, you all must have set your goals, right? And your goals are definitely to score higher. So set a target. Why it is very important to set a goal? If you don't set a goal, you don't have a path to work on, right? So do set a goal and do be a little ambitious. It provides a path to your success. It helps you to focus for what you are working for. It helps to use your time and resources very efficiently and effectively. And all above, it keeps you motivated. No, I have to score above 95%. I have to work for it. So do set your goals. Do not waste your time. Time management is a very important, is a very uh, big problem that student faces nowadays. They go to coaching classes. Some students even go for school. They have some things to submit. By, by this time, everything should be over. Now you need to know how to study smart, how to play smart. Do set your priorities. Do set your priorities. This is the time to pick up the notes. This is the time not to make the notes, right? Your notes should be ready. Your flowcharts should be ready. Your ma mind maps should be ready, right? So study smart. This is not the time to make the notes. Pick up good notes and study it. Very important to make your study schedule. If you don't make a schedule, you just study haywire. So do make a schedule, divide your time accordingly to the studies that you have to complete. 
right? And use the most productive time of your day. For example, let us say early mornings, or let us say the time that you get after you take a short nap for memorization. You all know that there are so many definitions, so many terminologies that you need to memorize so that you can pre present it appropriately. So use the most productive time of your day for memorization. Have a growth mindset. Having a growth mindset is very, very important. What is growth mindset? What do we mean by having a growth mindset? Believe in yourself, children. Believe in yourself. You are just going to give you give a CBSC grade 10 examination. There are many, many more mountains to climb. There are many, many more higher mountains to climb. Grade 12, JEE, NEET, or any other competitive exam. This is just the starting. So believe in yourself. You can do it, right? You can do anything given to you if you have enough time and if you have enough efforts to put into it. So do believe in you. Learn from your mistakes. You have given so many exams. You must have noticed what all mistakes you have done. So learn from your mistakes. Take a note of it, right? Accept the challenges. Don't get afraid. Don't let the fear be a part of you, right? Definitely, it's a human mind. You get, you have a fear, but overcome your fear. Accept the challenges. Reflect on your learning, what you know, what you don't know, what you still need to learn, and be determined of what you have to achieve. Be consistent and persistent in your studies. What does it mean? It, it should not happen that today you study for 10 hours and tomorrow you don't study, right? Or you, so have a consistent approach. Make a timetable, consistently go through it. Every day study, right? Study every day. It should not happen that one day you study 10 to 15 hours and the second day you don't study at all. So it's better to study seven to eight hours every day and be consistent in your approach. Why? Because consistent, consistency definitely gives you an exponential growth, right? need to do something every day and not only on one day, right? And when you do something every day, you definitely become great at it, right? You definitely become great at it. Be persistent in your work. Keep going. Don't get tired. Keep going. Find out the way which keeps you motivated, right? Partner with your teachers. Very, very important, right? Partner with your teachers. Teacher can be anyone. Teacher can be your school teacher. Teacher can be your coaching teacher. Teacher can be a teacher that you are following online. Do partner with them. What do I mean to say? Have a good relationship. What is relationship? Be open with them. Ask your doubts. Solve your doubts, right? It is, they are there to help you. Do take help from them. They will be very happy to help you. Develop a very effective learning strategies. It is not possible for any student to sit at a stretch and study for hours. So according to your abilities, according to your capabilities, read at short intervals. Read for one and a half hour. Take a break of 15 minutes. Do some good things in that 15 minutes. Do not watch mobile, right? Do good things in that 15 minutes watch Sing Chen, right? Or talk to your family member or take a round in your garden, right? Or close your eyes and sit, right? So take a 15 minutes, very effective break. Please do not see the mobiles. Summarize what you have just read. It is very important to have this strategy. Once you read something, just test yourself. Are you able to recall it? very important and see if you are not able to recall it revisit it so do develop certain learning strategies that works on you they are not same for all right so do find out and be consistent in that learning approach and the last very important thing is learning to write when you learn you write and
you don't mean to say that you write all long answers, right? But once you learn, do note it down point wise without looking at your notes. Are you able to recall it? Yes, do may have that habit. Do not worry about your writings. You can just scribble it down. Why writing is important? Because writing requires self-assessment. Do you know it? Can you frame a statement? Are you clear in your concept? So it gives you a self-assessment. Do write when you learn. It's a very important point to be noted. It helps in articulation of specific words. What happens? As a bio teacher, I have seen when you write a law, you do not articulate your words, right? But when you learn and you write, during exams, it will help you to write the law with a very specific words. So learn to write once you learn. Look after the physical and the mental health. Very, 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 very important, right? Why, why physical health and mental health? Physically, so you eat good food right? And mentally, you have to be free of any fear. You have to be free of any anxiety, right? Get a good, good care of your physical as well as mental health. Any negativity around you, just kick it off. Anyone who tries to uh, bog you down, you cannot do, you are not studying, that's not your cup of tea. Do not pay attention to these words. Just say to yourself, I can do it and I will do it, right? Now, once we have these attributes in ourselves, once we try to inculcate all these things for ourselves, no one is going to stop you from achieving high. Let's know the question paper so that whatever attributes we have, we implement in our question paper. It is very important to know the question paper. Any doubts, any questions that you have regarding the attributes that we have discussed, it's open to you, any student. Any problem that you face, either in having a time management or in having a approach to your teachers, are your teachers approachable? Or let us say, if, if not to, okay, what is the first thing that you need to study? How to have a good positive mental health? If you have any doubt, please put it forward. Okay, I'll move further. Let's know our question paper, right? The science question paper consists of 39 questions total. And these 39 questions are divided into five sections. All these questions, all these 39 questions are compulsory. There is no option in this 10, 39. You have to attempt all 39 questions. But yes, you might get an internal option. If you look it at look at it section wise, section A, B, C, D, and E are the five sections which we need to attempt. Just excuse me, I need to look for a teacher. Okay, fine, we continue. Let's go section one. Section A. Section A includes questions one to 20, right? Section A includes questions one to 20 and they all are MCQs or what we call as multiple choice questions. The kind of multiple choice questions that we have in our paper has only one correct answer. There are no more than one correct answers. So you have to zero down on one answer, right? They are mostly based on activities, experiments, diagrams, data, etc. You must have seen a sample paper. There are very less questions which are directly asked on any particular data or a concept given in your book, right? They are all, let us say, uh, competitive based questions. You have to select the most appropriate option from the four ap options given to you, right? Sometimes it happens that we are not able to decide upon which is the most appropriate option. At such times, you need to apply the elimination method. What do I mean by elimination method? Read statement A and C 
Is it the answer for the question? Does it fit to that concept? No, then you eliminate A. Now you have three options, right? This is the method we you use when you cannot reach to an appropriate option. Mostly you reach to an appropriate option by your knowledge itself. But if you get confused, do apply the elimination method. It's a very good method of solving MCQs. Read the data or the question statement of the MCQ very, very carefully and completely. Do not see one or two words and come to a conclusion that they have asked you this and that. Please read carefully and understand the problem statement. Most of the MCQs go wrong because you don't understand the problem statement. And the purpose of MCQ is only to identify the problem statement. They want you to get confused, right? So read the statement carefully and understand it. Section B is of two marker questions. Section C consists of three marker questions. And question D consists of five marker questions. All these three sections have internal choices. So when you read the paper, do decide upon your internal choices. Do take care of how many words do you use to complete that answer. If it's a two mark question, which is a very short answer question, do write answer within 30 to 50 words of limit, right? Section C. Section C is a three marker questions where you need to write your answers with a word limit of 50 to 80 words. And section D is a very long answer questions which are of five marks. So you need to write with a word limit of 80 to 120. But do take a note of it. Usually in science, a five marker question is divided into subparts A, B and C. And many children, they attempt A, B, and leave C, right? Because they do not pay attention how many internal subparts of the question are there. For example, identify the following parts in the given diagram and write their functions. So what do they do? They do identify but do not write the functions, even if they know it. So read the question carefully. Right, So this 80 to 20 words limit will be applicable if it is a total five mark question. If that five mark question is further divided into A, B, and C, you have to write accordingly. We go to the next section, that is section E. Section E has three questions. And this question is either case B, Based or a database or a graph. The paragraph only gives indication of the topic and the subtopic. Answers are not directly available in the paragraph. It only tells you that your answer should be related to a certain topic or a subtopic. Please take a note of it. It is not a comprehension of your language. Well, you will get answer from the paragraph. Correct. The second thing you need to take note of the section E is there is an internal choice in subparts A, B, C, or C. That means you can write this C or this C. A and B are compulsory. It is not A, B, C you write or you write only C. It is not like that. It is only C in option of C. Do take a note of it. Many children make a mistake and they lose the marks because they do not write A and B, right? With that, we finish with how does our paper look like? Now comes the time to attempt the question paper. When we attempt the question paper, we need to take care of the following things. Number one, we have uh, enough reading time. Use the reading time very, very, very effectively, right? Read your paper thoroughly. You have enough time to read your paper thoroughly, right? What to read during the reading, whether I will attempt this or I will attempt the other one. Do decide while you are reading your paper, right? 
look for the weightage. Now you will see the weightage is already given in the question paper. Why do I need to look for the weightage? <clears throat> it is applicable when a question is divided into A, B, and C. For example, question A says, state the law. Question B says, differentiate X and Y. And question C says, draw a diagram to support your answer. Now, this question is of three marks. Now, you have to decide what is the weightage of A, B, and C. Do not, okay, showing internet in unstable. I'll wait for some seconds. Okay, do not limit your answer. You know, do not think that it can be of a half mark. Think about that it can be of one mark also. So do write about higher weightage. Do not write of a lower weightage because you don't know the marking scheme, right? For example, if it is a differentiation between, so it can be of one marker or it can be of a two marker. If you have a time, it's better to attempt it as a two marker question. Right? Because you don't know the marking scheme, what is CBSE going to give to the examiners, right? Set your priority. I want to talk about on this. What do we mean by priority? That means with which section will you start attempting the paper? It is very important to be very confident to start with any section. This can come only by practice. It can come only by experience. How? You, when you solve sample question papers at home, adapt different methods. Solve one sample question starting with section A and going otherwise. Start another sample question by a long answer questions and then coming at MCQ at the last. On third question paper, you attempt it in a different way, right? Now you see how you are able to manage the time when you adapt different methods of attempting the sections. And then you decide that I'm going to attempt the question paper with this section as my priority. The section priority differs from a student to a student. A teeth can start with section A and Neil can be comfortable with section D, five marker, right? So you have to experience it and then you have to decide upon your priorities of the section. And finally, your presentation does matter, right? I'm going to talk about the presentation of an answer in a little more detail. If you have any doubt, you can ask me or if a chat is open to you, you can chat to me. Okay. We move further. We move to the very important three parts. Plan and prepare, present, and prioritize. What do we mean by plan and prepare? Plan is have a proper learning strategies. Prepare is how to prepare for your exam. Children, we are at a stage. Sure, Neil. I'll give some tips for last minute revision. It comes in your preparation only. Right? Fine. Plan and prepare. Plan, you already know, and you, you must have done the planning by now. It's the time where your planning should be ready and you must have implemented it. How many hours I'll study, which topics I will study first, which I will study later on. And you must have started preparation. What I want to say you now is your NCRT is your Bible, right? Your NCRT is your Bible. But by now, you must have gone through the NCRT n number of times. You have given MT2, you have given pre-board also. If you are thorough with your NCRT, this is not the time you keep on reading your NCRT, right? This is not your time you keep on reading your NCRT. Yes, NCRT is your Bible. But if you have gone through your NCRT again and again and again going through NCRT does not make a sense, right? So pick up good notes and you know you all children have very good notes with you. So read those notes now. Read those notes. It is very important to solve the question answers. So the questions which are given in text, 
but the in between the chapter, the questions which are given at the end of the chapter of NCRT book, do solve it. Solve the MCQs of exemplar, right? New exemplar is not released. So I, I, I'm not too much confident on how much we should uh, give our time to an exemplar, right? So go through your flow charts that you have made go through your classifications that you have created, go through your diagrams that you have already drawn. So go through your notes. It's the time to go through your notes. Solve previous year questions. Very, very important. Solve previous year questions. There are more chances of having those questions change the statement. It might happen that they change the way they present the question, but there are more chances of the similar kind of questions repeating in the paper. So do go through previous year question papers. When you solve question papers, pick up any sample question paper book from the stationery, right? Pick up any good sample question paper book from the stationery and solve question papers. When you solve the question papers, the questions that you are not able to answer very nicely, bookmark them. How to bookmark them? You write them separately in a book. If you find some questions which are very, uh, yes, Shilpa, do you want to write anything? Okay, book, bookmark them separately. Make a separate note of the tricky questions that becomes difficult to you. Now you prepare those notes. Now you prepare those topics. If you start preparing from A to Z again, you will not come to know what is a difficult topic of yours. So solve question papers, wherever you get stuck, prepare that topic and again continue, right? When you solve your question paper, do take or uh, consider the time limit. Do not solve it that you solve question one to 20 and your mother calls you for a dinner and you go. Do not do that. Solve sample question paper with a time limit of three hours, right? How many, what is the time limit of the paper? Three hours. And what is the total questions we have, marks we have? 80. So three hours is 180 minutes, right? And if you divide 180 minutes by 80, we come to around 2.25 minutes. What I mean to see is, have a habit of or have a practice of completing a one marker equivalent question in two minutes. Don't take more than two minutes, right? Similarly, when you draw a diagram, any physics or a biology or let us say a chemistry diagram, which is Ever, ever more than of one minute. This is how we prepare for your exam, right? Second and very really important is request to every child to go through a um, sample answer sheets of a topper, right? It is very important to go through the answer sheets of a topper, which is uploaded on CBSE site, right? You will see how well they present their answer sheets. Presentation is very, very, very important. When I say presentation is very important, I'm not talking about handwritings. Handwritings do not carry any marks, fine? But yes, you should write in such a way that your paper looks neat, clean, and it is readable to the examiner. That is how you should present it. In each line, you should maximum write seven to 10 words. Do not write less, do not write more. When you write more, it becomes a cluster. When you write less, it gets expanded, doesn't look nice, right? So have a habit of writing around seven to 10 words in a line, right? That is how we present it. Some answer, most of the answers in science are to be written point wise. So present your answer point wise. When you present your answers point wise, your first two, three points should be the most important points, right? Do not write some weak points as one, two, and three. Your one, two, and three points should be the most important points of that topic, right? For example, if I say, uh, why did Mendel selected pea plant? 
So there are many points. So children start writing, they are easy to grow and maintain. It's not a very good point to present your scientific aptitude. So start with a very good point that flowers are self-pollinating, but they respond to cross-pollination also. Later on, if you're not able to recollect some good points, then you can use these feeble points as final points of your presentation. I hope you are understanding it. The first point I said is how many words to write in a line. The second, when you write the points, write the most important points as one, two, and three. Why? Because when examiner will see one, two, the examiner will understand that the child knows the answer, right? The third point, whenever you start the answer, do write the introductory line. Whenever you start the answer, do write an introductory line. Right? For example, what do I say? Uh, let us say uh, they have asked us to, uh, uh, what are the different ways of oxidizing a particular chemical? So then you have to start with an introductory line. The following are the ways to oxidize dash, dash and dash. And then you write one, two, three, four. So introductory line is very, very important. Wherever there is a question, do you think it is right or wrong? Do you see it is yes or no? Writing yes and no also carries marks, right? Yes, I think it is correct, right? Yes, I think that no, I don't think so that mother is totally responsible for the gender of the baby. So writing that no and yes also carries marks. Right? So when we want to score higher, we have to take a note of it. Start loving your subject. You will present it better. Right? And finally is prioritize. What is prioritize? I have already had a word with you. So, okay, before I go to prioritize, when we are talking about presentation of answer, do not leave how you will present your answer to decide for in examination for it. You know, examination hall may decide mat karna ki mujhe answer kaise present karna hai. This you already develop in your habit when you are studying so that it will prevent any kind of anxiety. Right? So have a habit of a good presentation of answers from beginning itself. And we already have discussed about prioritization beforehand. That means when you study, you prioritize what subjects, what topics you have to study first and which sections you have to attempt first. It is based on your experience. There is no baseline. There is no rule that you have to start with MCQ or you have to start with long answers, then it will be more efficient. It differs from a student to a student, right? Any doubt, children? Okay, there was a question from Neil, what to do at the last moment, right? Correct, Manu, I correct. You, you have a very well reminded me of that when you present your answer, you should underline the important points, right? Important points and important words. It gives an overall picture to the examiner. Yes, this child knows the answer and it is bound that examiner will put a tick mark on your answer, right? So do underline the important points, but this cannot happen in the examination hall. It has to be your habit, right? It has to be your habit. Thanks, Manu. Okay, Neil wants to know when, what to do at the last moment. Last moment, Neil, you have to read your book where you have noted down some critical questions which you could not attempt. For example, when you are doing numericals during your studies, right? And you find a particular numerical to be very tricky to attempt it. At very same moment, you shift that numerical to another notebook, right? When you are drawing, when you are attempting any uh, equations or any, uh, let us say, chemical processes of chemistry, and you find that this question is a little tricky for me, it takes more energy and more time from me to understand it, immediately shift it to the other book. Let us say that book as a bookmark book, okay? So at the time, at the last moment, when you go for your exams, please open that book and go through it, fine? Make a list of formulas. 
make a list of chemical equations, make a list of terminologies in biology. You know, there are so many terminologies in biology. There are so many formulas in physics. Make a list of it, stick it on the board. Every time look at it. A day before, just go through it, relax, right? You have to work just now. At that time, you only have to revise what things you find difficult. Hope it helps you, Neil. There are certain takeaway points subject-wise from physics, chemistry, and biology. Question, sir, do you like to elaborate it? Uh, good evening once again. Thank you so very much, Vishital, ma'am, for yes. such a wonderful presentation. I hope all the students are now uh, buckle up uh, to appear for the board exam. I hope you remember the date, 4th of March, next month. Uh, Yes, so uh, let us recall that uh, there are uh, four chapters in physics, chapter number 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, before you start uh, the revision, you should uh, also recall the points or the topics which are uh, eliminated. You can again go back to CBSC website and you can check for the topics which are eliminated so that you don't have to uh, practice them because a uh, few topics might be difficult for you. <clears throat> Physics is a subject in which you will find a subjective question. Uh, yes, Teerth, I'll uh, come back to you after some time. Uh, physics is a subject which is a combination of uh, theory or you can say subjective question as well as numericals, right? Uh, if I talk about uh, theory, uh, whenever you are writing the answer, you have to write it point wise. As uh, Sheetal Ma'am explained, uh, you have to check the word limit as well. Good. Uh, if I talk about uh, numerical, uh, for the numerical, you have to maintain the list of formulas. For example, in numericals, chapter number 10, light, reflection and refraction, and chapter number 12, electricity. These are the two chapters, and few numericals are there in chapter 11 as well. So whenever you are preparing for the numericals, you should have the list of all the formulas. As uh, Sheetal Ma'am said, uh, you might have revised textbook many a times, but still, there are few questions which are uh, tricky. Uh, for example, you will find questions in examples, BBQs, and at the end of the chapter. Make sure that you have practiced all the numericals thoroughly. A written practice of numerical is must. Whenever you are practicing numericals, you make sure that you first write the given data from the question. You read, understand the question, and write the given data. For example, the current flowing through the circuit is 5 ampere. So in your answer, script, answer sheet, you will write I is equal to 5 ampere, and so on. So reading the question, writing the given data, and then you write the formula. Make sure that your formula is right. Putting the correct value, highlighting the answer with correct SI unit. Uh, when the board release the marking scheme, they always specify uh, the weightage for each and every step in the numerical. For example, if it is a three marker numerical, half mark may be for the writing given correct, correct given data. Half mark may be for writing the correct formula. Then another half mark would be for uh, putting the correct values. Another half mark will be for final answer and half mark will be for writing the correct SI unit of the physical quantity, right? So understanding the marking scheme of the numerical is very important. <clears throat> Ma'am, would request you to go back to the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes ma'am, yes. Uh, all four chapters have some diagrams. For example, if I talk about chapter number 13, uh, the question says, draw the magnetic field around the current carrying solenoid. So uh, second question is draw the magnetic field around the current carrying straight conductor and to draw the magnetic field around the circular loop. So these are, you know, uh, you have to draw the magnetic field line for the different substances or different objects, like the first is solenoid, you need to understand what is there in the solenoid. What will be the magnetic field line for a straight conductor? How these three are different from each other, right? 
uh, whenever you are drawing the magnetic field line, magnetic field line will be there only when there is a battery in the circuit. So you have to make sure that all the connections or everything is connected with the battery. After you show the battery, it is important to show the direction, positive and negative polarity of the battery, and then the direction of the current, which starts from positive terminal of the battery. You all are doing wonderful, but whenever uh, you lose the marks, it will be because of some silly mistake. These are the silly mistakes. You draw the diagram perfectly, you show the battery, you uh, draw the polarity, but by mistake, you forget to show the polarity of the emitter, or by mistake, you show, you forget to show the direction of the current. Make sure that you are having a good practice where you draw or where you show all these small, small things, because this will make the difference. This will help you to shift from 95 to 100. This is what you have to do now. Yes. yes. Next slide, ma'am. Sheetal ma'am, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. I think my connection yes. is... Yes, yes, yes. Delivery. It's done. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, the next slide uh, talks about... Able to see the next slide of race. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We are able to see. To see. Yes. Uh, the next is uh, chapter number 10. Uh, chapter number 10 and 11 is having ray diagrams. Whenever you are drawing the ray diagrams, make sure that uh, for concave mirror and for convex mirror, you have to show the portion which is reflecting side and which is rough side. So in the first figure, as you can see, the back side is a rough side, which shows that it is a concave mirror, right? So whenever there is a question related to concave mirror or a convex mirror, you have to show the which side would be a rough side and which side would act as a reflecting side. Next is uh, you have to show the arrows of all the rays, whether it is incident ray or reflected ray. So, you know, these are the small things. Examiner will check for the arrows only. Your uh, figure is perfect. You have put the object at the right location, the image size, the image position, everything is right. But by chance or by mistake or in hurry, you forget to show the direction of the arrow or you forget to show the rough side in the mirror, then you may end up losing the mark. Second figure shows the formation of virtual image. Always remember students, whenever there is a formation of virtual image, all the arrows or uh, the image itself should be dotted. It should not be a solid line. It should be a dotted line. You have to read the question properly that where exactly you're supposed to put the object and where the image would be formed. Yes, ma'am. Next. That's all for physics. Sir. Oh, thank you so very much. Thank I hope uh, I was able to give you enough guidance. Yes, Deerth, you were raising your hand. Uh, yes, sir. You said that uh, we must uh, take care of the reduced syllabus. So do we have to follow the one which is published by NCRT or we have to get it from CBSE side? Uh, yes. I'll take, I'll take the question. Yes, ma'am. Thank Sorry, you. Sir. Yeah. See, we have to follow the CBSE syllabus. We do not follow the NCRT reduced rationalized syllabus. Please take a note of it. We do not follow NCRT rationalized syllabus for class 10. For class 10, we follow CBSE reduced syllabus. So whatever syllabus is on cbsc.nic.in academics, you have to follow that. You don't have to follow the site of NCRT. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Any other questions, children? Okay, when physics is going on, I have an idea about how we can solve numericals. Pushes, sir, if you allow me. Yes, ma'am, definitely. Yeah. Please pick up the numericals randomly, right? 
if you have completed your course by now or maybe in the next four or five days and then you are practicing the numericals, um, I think you should not one day sit and practice only numericals related to magnetic effect or only numericals related to electricity. Open your book and pick up randomly, turn your pages, one from here, one from there, one from there, and pick five, 10 numericals and solve it. Right, because it will give you an ability to switch over the topic in your question paper also. So when you are practicing the question numericals, do pick up them randomly from the book. Do it randomly, right? If your course is over. Fine. Thank you. Um Hamlet Amen, are you there? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'll hand over I'll yes, hand over the class to Hamlata ma'am. Sure, sure. All right. So, children, uh, you have very well understood about uh, how to go about question paper for biology and physics portion. Now, for chemistry portion, uh, like it's it's all about chemical equations. So, when I say this, I want to say that uh, when you are attempting a question of uh, chemistry, do make sure that you are writing the chemical equation, especially if it is there asked in the question. Sometimes, what happens the question is asking students to write the chemical equation but children just uh, uh, skip that part probably or uh, do not uh, read that question probably and move on so the first thing is write down the equation properly uh, make sure to uh, mention about the precipitate formation if there is any gas formation if there is any uh, because that could be the uh, answer of the question. Um, so, so this is the first important part, right? Second is, uh, if uh, you are not able to recall um, any particular answer, uh, do not panic. Try to uh, recall any uh, anything related to that. Say, for example, try to recall chemical equation, try to recall example of that, try to recall the definition of that. Uh, it may not be asked in the question, but still try to recall that and write that. Do not leave it unanswered. The reason is if you are writing anything related to that question, uh, you may get a half mark over there. So instead of getting nothing, something is better. So this is another important thing. Do not leave anything unanswered. Uh, balanced chemical equations are to be written everywhere. Uh, sometimes uh, children say Ki, it is not asked in the question. So what is the purpose of balancing it? Um, whenever you are writing a chemical equation, it has to be balanced. But at the same time, if you feel it is taking a lot of time to balance the equation, then move on. Write the unbalanced equation and move on. Do not um, invest much of time in uh, balancing it. The most common errors uh, happen in the uh, organic uh, chemistry. Uh, the structures are to be drawn. Uh, the question could be asking you to draw the electron dot structure or the simple structure. Both are different and dis distinct, right? So uh, what children do is, if the question is asking you to draw electron dot structure, they draw the simple structure. Simple structure means they uh, draw the structure using the lines which represent covalent bonds. And we know electron dot structure has to be drawn using dot and cross which represent the electrons right so this you make sure and uh, the other thing is uh, the other common error is about oxidizing agent and uh, reducing agent uh, you should be able to identify the oxidizing agent and reducing agent properly as per the definition the definition says the substance which is capable of oxidizing the other substance is oxidizing agent and same for reducing agent. So apply the definition over there and identify it correctly. There may be more than one substance getting oxidized or reduced. So accordingly, you should be able to um, identify that. Uh, the next important topic is about electrolytic reduction and electrolytic refining. Children, this is the topic where mostly you will have five marker question. 
Now, there is a very thin line of difference between the two concepts. Electrolytic reduction is about extraction of uh, high reactive metals like sodium, where you take uh, molten sodium. Uh, sodium molten sodium chloride and electrolytic refining is about purifying copper metal so there you take the impure copper rod along with the copper sulfate electrolyte the rest is similar like you take them and then you allow electric current to pass through them um, and then uh, ions start moving so basically you have to make sure what they are asking if they are asking electrolytic reduction it has to be about extraction of sodium from sodium chloride. And if it is electrolytic refining, it is about purification of copper. Uh, one more thing I would like to mention over here, chloralkali process. In chloralkali, that's also a five mark question. In chloralkali process, you have to take aqueous sodium chloride. Uh, and here in electrolytic reduction, you have to take molten uh, NaCl. So that also is the, uh, uh, important point where um, mistakes happen most of the times, right? And uh, finally, um, understand what is the demand of the question, what exactly the question is asking, answer accordingly. Uh, as uh, Sheetal ma'am already mentioned about the passage-based questions, <coughs> sorry, uh, it's not like uh, English uh, language where you get the answer from the passage. Uh, it's um, you, you just read the content given in the passage and the question can be related to that. It may not be directly given in the passage. So try to recall the concepts and um, write the answer accordingly. So this was about uh, how to go about chemistry. If uh, anyone has any doubt, you can please ask your question. All right. Thank you, Hamlata, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, let's wind up the session with a very important point because the topic of the uh, today's session is how to score more than 95% right so let's talk about it how do how can we improve our score about 95 percent i hope my okay just a minute i'll change the share okay what i want to talk about is there is not much difference you know see as important is the okay as important is preparation. See, planning to sub ho gaya hamara. Hai na? Planning wala time to hamara ho gaya hai. Ab hamari preparation wali time chal rahi hai. Ye preparation wali time bhi kuch din mein ek dami khatam ho jayegi. Hamara preparation ready ho jayega. To when you are ready with your preparation, a very important thing that you need to concentrate is on your presentation, children. Many children, they know answer, but they are not able to present it. If we go to a birthday party, okay, if we want to go to a birthday party, we don't just get ready and go. We, we, we think about it, Anna, what dress I'm going to wear, what footwear I will wear, at what time will I go, how I will go. So you want to be presented the best in that birthday party. Why not in your answerships? Right? So present yourself best in the answer sheet. Children get 95%. They get 97. They get 99. There is not much difference between the three. There is not much difference between the three. The only difference between the three is their presentation. The only difference between the three is their presentation. So while you are studying, do prepare yourself for presenting your answers also. Paper ऐसे लिखो जैसे कोई teacher जो fifth sixth तक का ही knowledge है वो आपका paper पढ़ने वाले हैं so write paper as if your examiner is of grade five and six so write everything that you know about that particular topic related to that particular question do not skip the flow of the answer right with that I will like to end my thing and thank you all for joining the session.
hope it will help you. It is open for your discussion if you want, children, if you have any doubts. There's a question from uh, Parimis 3. How to revise efficiently during the preparatory leave? Pari, still I stick to my point. If your preparation is 100%, a day before your exam, you just go through the important things that you have noted down in your different book, or you have bookmarked them, or you have underlined it, or you have identified it. So a day before your exam does not make sense going through entire notes and entire textbook. You just need to go through the things which you find little more tricky than others. If there's no doubt, if there's no question, shall we end the session? Thank you children very much. Have a very nice day and all the best to you. Do remain in contact with your teachers. If you have any doubt, do solve it. Niyanta is asking, ma'am, from which side should we practice sample papers? Uh, Niyanta, uh, there are certain practice questions uploaded by CBSC again on the site. Apart from the sample question paper, there are practice questions uploaded by CBSC. You can pick up any good sample book from your stationery store near you, right? It can be a full marks, it can be Oswal. Um, I should not say it, but when I go through Oswal, I find many kinds of different questions also through it. You try going through those few books that are available and pick up any book from your stationery. All the best children. Be in touch of your teachers. Do solve your doubts. Thank you. Have a very nice day. Thank you, Pushar, sir. Thank you, Amrita, ma'am. Thank I'll you, ma'am. I'll end the session. Yeah.